Squinty was a little pig. You could tell he was a pig just as soon as you looked at him because he had the cutest little curly tail as though it wanted to tie itself into a bow but was not quite sure whether that was the right thing to do. And Squinty had a skin that was as pink under his white hairy bristles as a baby's toes. Also, Squinty had the oddest nose. It was just like a rubber ball flattened out, and when Squinty moved his nose up and down or sideways, as he did when he smelled the nice sour milk the farmer was bringing for the pig's dinner, why, when Squinty did that with his nose, it just made you want to laugh right out loud. But the funniest part of Squinty was his eyes, or rather one eye. And that eye squinted just as well as any eye ever squinted. Somehow or other, I don't just know why exactly, or I would tell you, the lid of one of Squinty's eyes was heavier than the other. That eye opened only halfway, and when Squinty looked up at you from the pen, where he lived with his mother and father and little brothers and sisters, why there was such a comical look on Squinty's face that you wanted to laugh right out loud again. In fact, lots of boys and girls, when they came to look at Squinty in his pen, could not help laughing when he peered up at them with one eye widely open and the other half shut. Oh, what a comical pig, the boys and girls would cry. What is his name? Oh, I guess we'll call him Squinty, the farmer said, and so Squinty was named. Perhaps if his mother had had her way about it, she would have given Squinty another name, as she did his brothers and sisters. In fact, she did name all of them, except Squinty. One of the little pigs was named Woof Woof, another Curly Tail, another Squealer, another Wee Wee, and another Puff Ball. There were seven pigs in all, and Squinty was the last one, so you can see he came from quite a large family. When his mother had named six of her little pigs, she came to Squinty. Let me see, grunted Mrs. Pig in her own way, for you know animals have a language of their own which no one else can understand. Let me see, said Mrs. Pig. What shall I call you? She was thinking of naming him Floppy, because the lid of one of his eyes sort of flopped down. But just then, a lot of boys and girls came running out to the pig pen. The boys and girls had come on a visit to the farmer who owned the pigs, and when they looked in and saw big Mr. and Mrs. Pig and the little ones, one boy called out, Oh, what a queer little pig with one eye partly open, and how funny he looks at you. What is his name? Well, I guess we'll call him Squinty, the farmer had said, and so, just as I have told you, Squinty got his name. Hmm, Squinty! exclaimed Mrs. Pig as she heard what the farmer said. I don't know as I like that. Oh, it will do very well, answered Mr. Pig. It will save you thinking up a name for him. And after all, you know, he does squint. Not that it amounts to anything. In fact, it is rather stylish, I think. Let him be called Squinty. All right, answered Mrs. Pig. So Squinty it was. Hello, Squinty, called the boys and girls, giving the little pig his new name. Hello, Squinty! Woof, woof, grunted Squinty. That meant in his language, hello, you see. For though Squinty and his mother and father and brothers and sisters could understand man talk and boy and girl talk, they could not speak that language themselves, but had to talk in their own way. Nearly all animals understand our talk, even though they cannot speak to us. Just look at a dog, for instance. When you call to him, come here, doesn't he come? Of course he does. And when you say, lie down, sir, doesn't he lie down? That is, if he is a good dog and minds, he understands anyhow. And see how horses understand how to go when the driver says, giddy up and how they stop when he says, whoa. So you need not think it strange that a little pig could understand our kind of talk, though he could not speak it himself. Well, Squinty the comical pig lived with his mother and father and brothers and sisters in the farmer's pen for some time. 
As the days went on, Squinty grew fatter and fatter until his pink skin under his white bristles was swelled out like a balloon. Hmph, exclaimed the farmer one day as he leaned over the top of the pen to look down on the pigs after he had poured their dinner into the trough. Hmph, that little pig with the squinty eye is getting pretty big. I thought he was going to be a little runt, but he seems to be growing as fast as the others. Squinty was glad when he heard that, for he wanted to grow up to be a fine, large pig. The farmer took a corn cob from which all the yellow kernels of corn had been shelled, and with it he scratched the back of Squinty. Pigs like to have their backs scratched, just as cats like to have you rub their smooth fur or tickle them under the ears. Ugh, ugh, grunted Squinty, looking up at the farmer with his comical eyes, one half shut and the other wide open. Ugh. Ugh. and with his odd eyes and one ear cocked forward and the other flopping over backward, Squinty looked so funny that the farmer had to laugh out loud. "'What's the matter, Rufus?' asked the farmer's wife, who was gathering the eggs. "'Oh, it's this pig,' laughed the farmer. "'He has such a queer look on his face.' "'Let me see,' exclaimed the farmer's wife. She, too, looked down into the pen." Oh, isn't he comical, she cried. Then, being a very kind lady and liking all the farm animals, the farmer's wife went out in the potato patch and pulled up some pigweed. This is a green weed that grows in the garden, but it does no good there. Instead, it does harm, and farmers like to pull it up to get rid of it. But if pigweed is no good for the garden, it is good for pigs, and they like to chew the green leaves. Here, Squinty! called the farmer's wife, tossing some of the juicy green weed to the little pig. Eat this! Ugh, ugh, grunted Squinty, and he began to chew the green leaves. I suppose that was his way of saying thank you. As soon as Squinty's brothers and sisters saw the green pigweed the farmer's wife had tossed into the pen, up they rushed to the trough, grunting and squealing to get some too. They pushed and scrambled and even stepped into the trough, so eager were they to get something to eat, even though they had been fed only a little while before. That is one strange thing about pigs. They seem to be always hungry, and Squinty's brothers and sisters were no different from other pigs. But wait just a moment. They were a bit different, for they were much cleaner than many pigs I have seen. The farmer who owned them knew that pigs do not like to live in mud and dirt any more than do cows and horses, so this farmer had for his pigs a nice pen with a dry board floor and plenty of corn husks for their bed. They had clean water to drink and a shady place in which to lie down and sleep. Of course, there was a mud bath in the pig pen, for no matter how clean pigs are, once in a while they like to roll in the mud and I'll tell you the reason for that. You see, flies and mosquitoes and other pests like to bite pigs. The pigs know this, and they also know that if they roll in the mud and get covered with it, the mud will make a coating over them to keep the biting flies away. So that is why pigs like to roll in the mud once in a while, just as you sometimes see a circus elephant scatter dust over his back to drive away the flies. And even such a thick-skinned animal as a rhinoceros likes to plaster himself with mud to keep away the insects. But after Squinty and his brothers and sisters had rolled in the mud, they were always glad when the farmer came with the garden hose and washed them clean again, so their pink skins showed beneath their white, hairy bristles. Squinty and the other pigs grew until they were a nice size. They had nothing to do but eat and sleep, and of course... That will make anyone grow. Now Squinty, though he was not the largest of the family of pig children, was by far the smartest. He learned more quickly than did his brothers and sisters how to run to the trough to eat when his mother called him, and he learned how to stand up against one side of the pen and rub himself back and forth to scratch his side when a mosquito had bitten him in a place he could not reach with his foot. In fact, Squinty was a little too smart. He wanted to do many things his brothers and sisters never thought of. One day, when Squinty and the others had eaten their dinner, Squinty told his brother Woof Woof that he thought it would be a nice thing to have some fun. 
Woof Woof said he thought so too, but he didn't just know what to do. In fact, there was not much one could do in a pig pen. If we could only get out of here, grunted Squinty as he looked out through a crack in the boards and saw the green garden where pigweed was growing thickly. Yes, but we can't, said Woof Woof. Squinty was not so sure about this. In fact, he was a very inquisitive little pig. That is, he always wanted to find out about things and why this and that was so and what made the wheels go around and all like that. I think I can get out through that place, said Squinty to himself a little later. He had found another crack between two boards of the pen, a large crack, and one edge of the board was loose. Squinty began to push with his rubbery nose. A pig's nose is pretty strong, you know, for it is made for digging or rooting in the earth to turn up acorns and other good things to eat. Squinty pushed and pushed on the board until he had made it very loose. The crack was getting wider. Oh, I can surely get out, he thought. He looked around. His mother and father and all the little pigs were asleep in the shady part of the pen. I'm going said Squinty to himself. He gave one extra hard push, and there he was through the big crack and outside the pen. It was the first time he had ever been out in his life. At first, he was a little frightened, but when he looked over into the potato patch and saw pigweed growing there, he was happy. Oh, what a good meal I shall have, grunted Squinty. He ran toward a large bunch of the juicy green pigweed, but before he reached it, he heard a dreadful noise. Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, went some animal, and then came some growls, and the next moment Squinty saw rushing toward him Don, the big black and white dog of the farmer. Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, barked dog, and that meant in his language, get back in your pen, Squinty. What do you mean by coming out? Get back! Bow wow! Oh dear, oh dear, squealed Squinty. I shall be bitten, sure. That dog will bite me. Oh dear, why didn't I stay in the pen? Squinty turned on his little short legs as quickly as he could and started back for the pen. But it was not easy to run in a potato field, and Squinty, not having lived in the woods and fields as do some pigs, was not a very good runner. Bow wow! Bow wow! barked Don, running after Squinty. I do not believe Don really meant to hurt the comical little pig. In fact, I know he did not, for Don was very kind-hearted. But Don knew that pigs were supposed to stay in their pen and not come out to root up the garden. So Don barked. Bow wow! Bow wow! Get back where you belong, Squinty! Squinty ran as fast as he could, but Don ran faster. Squinty caught his foot in a melon vine, and down he went. Before he could get up, Don was close to him, and the next moment Squinty felt his ear being taken between Don's strong white teeth. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, squealed Squinty in his own queer pig language. What is going to happen to me? In the barking of Don the dog and the squealing of Squinty, the comical pig, who was being led along by his ear, there was so much noise in the farmer's potato patch for a few moments that if you had been there, I think you would have wondered what was happening. Bow wow! Bow wow! Bow wow! barked Don, still keeping hold of Squinty's ear, though he did not pinch very hard. Bow wow! Get back in your pen where you belong! Squee! 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 yelled Squinty. Oh, please let me go. I'll be good. And so it went on, the dog talking in his barking language and Squinty squealing in his pig talk. But they could easily understand one another, even if no one else could. Back in the pen, Mrs. Pig suddenly awakened from a nap. So did Mr. Pig and all the little pigs. Don't you hear something making a noise? asked Mrs. Pig of her husband. Why, yes, I think I do, he answered slowly as he looked in the feed trough to see if the farmer had left any more sour milk there for the pig family to eat, but there was none. I hear someone squealing, said Woof Woof, the largest boy pig of them all. So do I, 
said Squeaker, a little girl pig. Mrs. Pig sat up and looked all over the pen. She was counting her children to see if they were all there. She did not see Squinty, and at once she became frightened. "'Squinty is gone!' cried Mrs. Pig. "'Oh, where can he be?' The squealing noise became louder. So did the barking of the dog. "'Look, there's a board off the side of the pen,' said Mr. Pig. "'Yes, Squinty wanted me to come outside with him,' said Woof Woof. "'But I wouldn't go!' "'Oh, maybe my little boy pig is outside there making all that noise,' cried Mrs. Pig to her husband. "'Well, he isn't making all that noise by himself,' said the farmer pig. "'Someone is helping him make it, I'm sure.' They all listened and heard the barking of Don as well as the squealing of Squinty. "'Oh, some animal has caught him!' cried Mrs. Pig. Then she pushed as hard as she could with her nose against the loose board near the hole in the pen through which Squinty had run a little while before. Mrs. Pig soon knocked off the board, and then she ran out into the garden. Mr. Pig and all the little pigs ran after her. The first thing Mrs. Pig saw was her little boy pig down on the ground in the middle of a row of melon vines, with Don holding Squinty's ear. Bow wow! barked Don. Squee! Squee! cried Squinty. Oh, you poor little pig! grunted Mrs. Pig. What has happened to you? Oh, mamma! squealed Squinty. I, I ran out of the pen to see what it was like outside, and I was just eating some pigweed when this big dog chased after me. Yes, I did, said Don, growling in his deep voice. The place for pigs, little or big, is in their pen. The farmer does not want you to come out and spoil his garden. He tells me to watch you and to drive you back if you come in it. This is the first time I have ever seen any of you pigs in the garden, went on Don, still holding on Squinty's ear, and I want you please to go back in your pen. Oh, I'll go, I'll go, cried Squinty. Only let loose of my ear, Mr. Dog, if you please. What? Have you hold of Squinty's ear? asked Woof Woof. Oh, do please let him go. Yes, I will, now that you are here, said Don, and he took his strong white teeth from the piggy boy's ear. I did not bite him hard enough to hurt him, said Don, but I had to catch hold of him somewhere, and taking him by the ear was better than taking him by the tail, I think. Oh, yes, indeed, agreed Mr. Pig. Once, when I was a little pig, a dog bit me on the tail, and I never got over it. In fact, I have the marks yet and he tried to look around at his tail, which had a kink in it, but Mr. Pig was too fat to see his own tail. So that's why I took hold of Squinty by the ear, went on Don. Did I hurt you very much? He asked the little pig who had run out of the pen. Oh, no, not much, Squinty said as he rubbed his ear with his paw. Then, as he saw a bunch of pigweed close to him, he began nibbling that, and his brothers and sisters, seeing him do this, began to eat the pigweed also. Come, this will never do, barked Don the dog. I'm sorry, but all you pigs must go back in your own pen. The farmer would not like you to be out in his garden. Yes, I suppose we must, said Mrs. Pig with a sigh. Yet it is very nice out in the garden, but we must stay in our pen. Come, children, said Mr. Pig. We must stay in our own place, for if we rooted up the farmer's garden, much as we would like to do it, he would have no vegetables to eat this winter. Then he might be angry at us and would give us no more sour milk. So we will go back to our pen. Bow wow! Bow wow! barked Don, running here and there. I will show you the way back to your pen, he said kindly. And he capered about here and there, driving the pigs back to the place where Squinty had run from and where all the others had come from to see what had happened to him. The farmer, who was hoeing corn, heard the barking of his dog. He dropped his hoe and ran. Something must have happened, he cried. Maybe the big bull has gotten loose from his field and is chasing someone with a red dress. Into the garden he ran, and then he saw Don driving Squinty and his brothers and sisters and mother and father back to the pen. Ha! So the pigs got loose, the farmer cried. Good dog, chase him back. Bow wow! barked Don. I will. But the pigs did not need much driving, for
for they were very good and did not want to cause Don or the farmer any trouble if they could help it. Soon Squinty and the others were safely in the pen again. The farmer looked at them carefully. So, you think you'd like to get out and have a run, did you? He asked, speaking to the pigs, just as if they could understand him. And they did, just as your dog understands and minds you when you call to him to come to you. So, you wanted a run in the garden, eh? Went on the farmer. Well, I don't blame you, for it isn't much fun to stay cooped up in a pen all the while. But still, I can't have you out. But I'll give you a nice lot of pigweed just the same, for you must be hungry. Then the farmer pulled up some more of the green stuff and tossed it into the pen. He also gave them plenty of sour milk, which pigs like better than milk. Besides, it's cheaper. Well, I guess you won't run away again, the farmer went on as he nailed back on the pen, the board which Squinty had pushed off. Perhaps the farmer thought one of the big pigs, the papa or mama one, had made the hole for the others to get out. I'm sure he never thought little Squinty with his comical eye did it, but we know Squinty did, don't we? For some time after this, Squinty was a very good pig indeed. Not that I mean to say he was bad when he ran out of the pen, for he did not know any better. But after the board was nailed on tightly again, he did not try to push it off. Perhaps he knew he could not do it. Squinty and his brothers and sisters had lots of fun in the pen, even if they could not go out. They played games in the straw, hiding away from one another and squealing and grunting when they were found. They raced around the pen, playing a game much like our game of tag. And if they could have had someone to tie a handkerchief over their eyes, they might have played blind man's bluff. But of course, they did not really do this. However, they raced about and jumped over each other's backs and climbed upon the fat sides of their father and mother while the big pigs lay asleep in the shade. Squinty was a pig very fond of playing tricks. Sometimes he would take a choice, tender piece of pigweed, which the farmer had tossed into the pen, and hide it in the soft dirt in one corner. Now see who can find it, Squinty would call to his brothers and sisters, and they would hunt all over for it, rooting up the earth with their strong, rubbery noses. Digging in the dirt was good practice for them, and their mother and father would watch them, saying, Ah, oh, when they grow up, they will be very good rootin' pigs indeed. Yes, very good. Then Squinty or his brothers or sisters would root up the hidden pigweed and the old pigs would go to sleep again, for they did not need to practice digging, having done so when they were young. About all they did was to eat and sleep and tell the little pigs how to behave. Squinty, how is your ear that Don the dog bit? asked Mrs. Pig of her little boy pig one day. Oh, it doesn't hurt me, answered Squinty. Don did not bite very hard. He only wanted to catch me. Yes, Don is a good dog, said Mrs. Pig, but you must be careful of other dogs, Squinty. Why, are not all dogs alike? the little pig boy asked. Oh, no, indeed, answered Mrs. Pig. Some of them are very bad and savage. They would bite you very hard if they got the chance. So whenever you see any dog except Don running toward you, run away as fast as you can. I will, promised Squinty, and he did not know how soon he would be glad to remember his mother's good advice. For some days, nothing much happened in the pig pen. Once or twice, Squinty pushed his nose against the board the farmer had nailed on, but it was very tight, he found, and he could not push it off. Are you trying to get out again? asked Woof Woof. Oh, I don't know, Squinty would answer. I think it would be fun if we all could, don't you? No, indeed, cried Woof Woof. Some big dog might chase us. I want to stay in the pen. But Squinty was a brave, bold, mischievous little pig. He was not content to stay in the pen. He wanted to have some adventures. He wanted to get out in the garden, which looked so nice and green. Squinty looked all around the other sides of the pen. He wanted to see if there was another loose board. If there was, he made up his little pig mind that he would go out again. 
But he said nothing of this to his brothers or sisters or to his father or mother. He felt that they would not like him to go away again. But there is not much fun staying in the pen all the while, thought Squinty. I wish I could get out. Squinty, you see, had made up his mind to run away. Often horses run away, so I don't see why pigs can't also. Anyhow, that was what Squinty intended to do. But for nearly a week after his first adventure in the garden, Squinty had no chance to slip out of the pen. All the boards seemed very tight. Then, one day, it was very hot. The sun shone brightly. "'Dig holes for yourselves in the cool ground and lie down in them,' said Mrs. Pig. "'That will cool you off.' Each little pig dug a hole for himself, just as a hen does when she wants to take a dust bath. Squinty dug his hole near the lower edge of the boards on one side of the pen. "'I'll make a big hole,' he thought to himself." And as Squinty dug down, he noticed that he could see under the bottom of the boards. He could look right out into the garden. That is very queer, thought the little pig boy. I believe I can get out of the pen by crawling under a board as well as by pushing one loose from the side. I'll try it. Squinty was learning things, you see. So he dug the hole deeper and deeper, and soon it was large enough for him to slip under the bottom board. Now I can run away, he grunted softly to himself. He looked all around the pen. His father, mother, sisters, and brothers were fast asleep in their cool holes of earth. I'm going, said Squinty, and the next moment he had slipped under the side of the pen, through the hole he had dug, and once more he was out in the garden. Now for some adventures, said Squinty in a jolly whisper, a pig's whisper, you know. Chapter 3. Squinty is Lost This was the second time Squinty had run out of the pen and into the farmer's garden, the first time he had been caught and brought back by Don the dog. This time Squinty did not intend to get caught, if he could help it. So after crawling out through the hole under the pen, the little pig came to a stop and looked carefully on all sides of him. His one little squinty eye was opened as wide as it would open, and the other eye was opened still wider. Squinty wanted to see all there was to be seen. He cocked one ear up in front of him to listen to any sounds that might come from that direction, and the other ear he drooped over toward his back to hear any noises that might come from behind him. What Squinty was especially listening for was the barking of Don the dog. For, thought Squinty, I don't want Don to catch me again and make me go back before I have had any fun. It will be time enough to go back to the pen when it is dark. Yes, that will be time enough. For, of course, Squinty did not think of staying out after the sun had gone down. Or at least he did not imagine he would. But you just wait and see what happens. Squinty looked carefully about him. Even if one eye did droop a little, he could still see out of it very well. And he saw no signs of Don, the big dog. Nor could Squinty hear him. Don must be far away, the little pig thought, far away, perhaps taking a swim in the brook where the dog often went to cool off in hot weather. I think I'll go and have a swim myself, thought Squinty. He knew there was a brook somewhere on the farm, for he could hear the tinkle and fall of the water even in the pig pen. But where the brook was, he did not know exactly. But it will be an adventure to hunt for it, Squinty thought. I guess I can easily find it. Here I go. And with that, he started to walk between the rows of potatoes. Squinty made up his little mind that he was going to be very careful. Now that he was safely out of the pen again, he did not want to be caught the second time. He did not want Don or the farmer to see him, so he crawled along, keeping as much out of sight as he could. I wish my brothers Woof Woof or Squealer were with me said Squinty softly to himself in pig language. But if I had awakened them and asked them to run away with me, Mama or Papa might have heard and stopped us. 
Squinty did not feel at all sorry about running away and leaving his father and mother and brothers and sisters. You see, he thought he would be back with them again in a few hours, for he did not intend to stay away from the pen longer than that. But many things can happen in a few hours, as you shall see. I won't eat any pigweed just yet, thought Squinty as he went softly on between the rows of potato vines. To pull up any of it and eat it now would make it wiggle. Then Don or the farmer might see it wiggling and run over to find out what it was all about. Then I'd be caught. I'll wait a bit. So though he was very hungry, he would not eat a bit of the pigweed that grew near the pen, and he never so much as dreamed of taking any of the farmer's potatoes. He did not yet know the taste of them. But let me tell you, pigs who have eaten potatoes even the little ones the farmer cannot sell are very fond of them. But so far, Squinty had never eaten even a little potato. On and on went the little pig, looking back now and then toward the pen to see if any of the other pigs were coming after him, but none were. And there was no sign of Don, the barking dog, nor the farmer either. There was nothing to stop Squinty from running away, Soon he was some distance from the pen, and then he thought it would be safe to nibble at a bit of pigweed. He took a large mouthful from a tall green plant. Oh, how good that tastes, thought Squinty. It is much better and fresher than the kind the farmer throws into the pen to us. Perhaps this was true, but I imagine the reason the pigweed tasted so much better was because Squinty was running away. Perhaps you know how it is yourself. Did you ever go out the back way when Mama was washing the dishes and run over to your aunt's or your grandma's house and get a piece of bread and jam? If you ever did, you probably thought that bread and jam was much nicer than the kind you could get at home. Though really, there isn't any better bread and jam than Mother makes. But somehow or other, the kind you get away from home tastes differently, doesn't it? It was that way with Squinty, the comical pig. He ate and ate the pigweed until he had eaten about as much as was good for him. And then, as he saw one little potato on the ground, where it had rolled out of the hill in which it grew with the others, Squinty ate that. He did not think the farmer would care. Oh, how good it is, he thought. I wish I had not eaten so much pigweed. Then I could eat more of those funny round things the farmer calls potatoes. Now I will have to wait until I am hungry again. Squinty knew that would not be very long, for pigs get hungry many times a day. That is what makes them grow fat so fast. They eat so often. But eating often is not good for boys and girls. Squinty had now come some distance away from the pen, where he lived with his mother, father, sisters, and brothers. He wondered if they had awakened yet, or had seen the hole out of which he had crawled, and if they were puzzled as to where he had gone. "'But they can't find me,' said Squinty, with something that sounded like a laugh. "'I suppose pigs can laugh, in their own way, at any rate.' "'No, they can't find me,' thought Squinty, looking all around." All he saw were the rows of potato vines, and farther off, a field of tall green corn. Well, I have the whole day to myself, thought Squinty. I can do as I please and not go back until night. Let me see, what shall I do first? I guess I will go to sleep in the shade. So he stretched out in the shade of a big potato vine, and curling up in a little pink ball, he closed his eyes, the squinty one as well as the good one. But first, Squinty looked all around to make sure Don, the dog, was not in sight. He saw nothing of him. When Squinty awakened, he felt hungry, as he always did after a sleep. Now for some more of those nice potatoes, he said to himself. He liked them right after his first taste. He did not look around for the little ones that might have fallen out of the hills themselves. No, instead, Squinty began rooting them out of the earth with his strong, rubbery nose, made just for digging. I'm not saying Squinty did right in this. In fact, he did wrong. But then he was a little pig, and he knew no better. In fact, it was the first time he had really run away so far, and he was quite hungry, and potatoes were better than pigweed. 
Squinty ate as many potatoes as he wanted, and then he said to himself, in a way pigs have, Well, I guess I'll go on to the brook and cool off in the water. That will do me good. After that, I'll look around and see what will happen next. Squinty had a good nose for smelling, as most animals have, and tilting it up in the air, Squinty sniffed and snuffed. He wanted to smell the water so as to take the shortest path to the brook. Ha! It's right over there, exclaimed Squinty to himself. I can easily find the water to take a bath. Across the potato field he went, taking care to keep well down between the rows of green vines, for he did not want to be seen by the dog or the farmer. Once, as Squinty was walking along, he saw what he thought was another potato on the ground in front of him. He put his nose out toward it, intending to eat it, but the thing gave a big jump and hopped out of the way. Ha! Huh? That must be one of the hop toads I heard my mother tell about, thought Squinty. I must not hurt them, for they are good to catch the flies that tickle me when I try to sleep. Hop on, he said to the toad. I won't bother you. The toad did not stop to say anything. She just hopped on and hid under a big stone. Maybe she was afraid of Squinty, but he would have not hurt her. Soon the little pig came to the brook of cool water, and after looking about to see that there was no danger near, Squinty waded in and took a long drink. Then he rolled over and over again in it, washing off all the mud and dirt, and coming out as clean and as pink as a little baby. Squinty was a real nice pig, even if he had run away. Let me see, he said to himself after his bath. What shall I do now? Which way shall I go? Well, he happened to be hungry after his swim. In fact, Squinty was very often hungry, so he thought he would see if he could find anything more to eat. I have had potatoes and pigweed, he thought, and now I would like some apples. I wonder if there are any apple trees around here. He looked, and across the field of corn he thought he saw an apple tree. He made up his mind to go there. And that is where Squinty made another mistake. He made one when he ran away from the pen and another one when he started to go through the cornfield. Corn, you know, grows quite high and pigs, even the largest of them, are not very tall, at least not until they stand on their hind legs. That was a trick Squinty had not yet learned. So he had to go along on four legs and this made him low down. Now he had been able to look over the tops of the potato vines as they were not very high, but Squinty could not look over the top of the corn stalks. No sooner had he gotten into the field and started to walk along the corn rows than he could not see where he was going. He could not even see the apple tree in the middle of the field. Well, this is queer, thought Squinty. I guess I had better go back. No, I will keep on. I may come to the apple tree soon. He hurried on between the corn rows, but though he went a long distance, he did not come to the apple tree. I guess I will go back to the brook where I had my bath and start over again from there, thought Squinty. I will not try to get any apples today. I will eat only potatoes and pigweed. Yes, I will go back. But that was not so easy to do as he had thought. Squinty went this way and that through the rows of corn, but he could not find the brook. He could not find his way back, nor could he find the apple tree. On all sides of him was the tall corn. That was all poor Squinty could see. Finally, all tired out and dusty, the little pig stopped and sighed. Oh dear, I guess I am lost.